What's going on arcade nerds? Um, before I start this video, my boss wanted me to, my boss gave me a flyer and he wanted me to, to put it on the YouTube channel. And of course, uh, I left it sit on the dash of my truck and it's, the paper's all kind of curled up now. But uh, what this flyer is for is the 34th Annual Pinball Expo. 34th show, this is the world's lo longest running pinball related uh, ar arcade show. And uh, if you like pinballs, this is definitely the place to go. And this year we're going to do a whole bunch of arcade machines also. Um, and, and we're going to, you know, try to get more arcades there. Anyways, now, what this video is really going to be about is, you see this television set? Um, years ago, um, I used to go to arcade auctions and, and whatever. And, you know, this is when I first started collecting arcade machines. Um, and I used to go to these arcade auctions, and I, and I would try to find, in arcade shows, and I would try to find all the technical guys. You know, you, you go to a show, and you always, you know, and, and, and then I would try to get to know those guys. And uh, something came up where I said, hey, why can't you just convert a television set to run an arcade? I'm so, I said, I know you can hack into it and make it work as an arcade monitor. And everyone's like, oh, God, that's so stupid. You can't do that. You know, you know uh, that it's different technology. It can't be done and so on. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, it can. And, and so I just kind of kept quiet after that and never brought it up. And it always kind of stuck in the back of my mind. And, and so uh, maybe six months after, you know, after I started buying all these arcade machines, uh, I, uh, I, I, I decided to do it. And I did do it. And it worked. And it works great. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, um, I seen, I seen, and the reason I even thought of this, again, is uh, on Hackaday, someone, uh, Hackaday is a website where they show all these cool hacks people do, um, and someone showed that they, showed that they did it, and, uh, but, but they didn't get the colors right, they were, and the, the picture was funny. I'm going to show you how to do this the right way, and, and all the colors are going to be just fine, and you can use this on any standard resolution uh, you know, CGA arcade machine. So the first, you know, the first thing you want to do is, you know, you want to pick out the right TV, and it, it, it may be kind of hard. Um, just about any TV can be an arcade monitor. I'm talking about we're going to use the original guts, and we're going to hack these guts to work. But I'll tell you some bonuses, some things you might want to look for. Number one, you want to get a TV that turns itself on. This TV remembers its last state, so as soon as you turn it on. As soon as you plug it in, it turns itself on, uh, and, and 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 there is other ways around it. Now, some TVs, if you hold the power button down, or in other words, solder the power switch shut, it will turn itself on automatically. But keep in mind, the buttons and controls on a TV set work on a matrix interface, so um, only one button can be a, a accessed at one time. So if that button were to happen, you cannot do any adjustments on the TV screen afterwards. Um, also, was it, what else do you want? Oh, um, you want to try to get a TV set that has a video in, has composite in. Uh, you don't have to, but this will more likely make your uh, conversion easier in the schematics. And uh, that's about it, those two things. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's tear this damn thing apart. Um, but you know what? I have a better idea. First, let's unplug it. Okay, and you know, on a TV set, you just, just, you know, once you've seen one, you've seen them all, these newer ones here. Um, usually there's a couple screws here and here, and there's probably a couple screws down here. There's one here, and one down here probably. But you know, they're all about, about in these locations. I'm gonna go ahead and just tear this thing apart. Okay, so now the back of the TV is off, and uh, First thing we have to do is we have to figure out where the video chip is. Uh, so I'm going to pull this guy out. Usually, the usually these just slide out. And uh, this is a newer TV. I mean, this is 2000, 2003. So uh, usually the chips are going to be on the bottom. Now I see two chips here. Okay, uh, let me zoom in. One of these chips is going to be a simple little computer that runs the menu. And another one of these chips is going to be like the video chip, okay? And I don't know what I don't know which one's which exactly, but there's always going to be numbers on these chips 
And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the numbers on both of these chips, figure out which one is the little mini computer, and figure out which one is the uh, video uh, chip. So, you know, so let, let me do a quick Google search and let's let's find some pinouts. Okay, unfortunately, none of these, neither of these uh, chips can be found uh, on Go in Google. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to somehow lay this on its side so I can see the screen and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I can kind of get to the back of the chip and, I, and I'm going to be able to see the front of the screen. So this is what I'm going to do. This may sound funny to some of you guys, but don't worry, nothing around those chips is high, is high enough voltage to electrocute you or shock you in any way. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to lick my fingernail and I'm going to touch the pins on the chip until colors are affected. See, the, the, the pins we're looking for are red, green, and blue uh, in composite sync, okay? Now, composite sync is actually sort of easy. We might be able to tap it in through the front, but I'm probably going to tap it in through the chip itself. So I'm looking for the screen to turn red, blue, green, and the screen to lose sync with when I touch my wet finger on the uh, chips. So let me set the camera up and let's see if we can figure it out. Okay, the TV is on its side. Let me figure out which button is going to send me back to video. You know what? Let's let let's leave it at uh, one of that. Yeah, let's leave it at the static screen. Okay, so I am licking my finger. I'm going to touch these chips, this, these pins. Nothing at all. That's making me think this this chip that I'm touching right now must be the computer side. So I'm going to touch these chips. Nothing. Oh, I heard that the sync frequency mess up a little bit. I'm going to touch these. The little screen went black for a second. Touch these. That went dim. Oh, turned off on me. Let's turn it back on. Okay, man. Okay, we're back on. Oh, I see colors. Oh, you see the screen, the on-screen display? How it's changing colors? So let me go back to video. Oh, that's volume. Video. Okay. So there's my video display where it says the word video. Oh. See, I am, uh, I'm bumping the, uh, the chip and it's, uh, Probably it's taking it out of range. Like an overvolted shutdown or something like that. Yeah, see I'm changing the color. So oh, where'd I had it? Okay. I had it for a second. Yeah, I had blue there. There's a cayenne. So let's tap into that. And uh, let me show you where I'm probing around in case you want to do this yourself. Okay, the area I was probing around is on this big square chip, and that is right around this area. It was red, was uh, it was different color. colors. So I don't know. This could still be the the video. I mean, the computer side, um, and, and that's just the outputs to the video chip. Either way, I don't care because I had a black screen in video mode, and this produced color. So whatever, th there's there's a million different ways to do this, and this is how we're gonna go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get. Oh, I see. This signal could be either way. This could be if I ground it out, it would it would make that color, or if I add voltage to it, it would make that color. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm I'm gonna grab let's say, a 2K resistor. And I'm going to 
find 5 volts on this and find ground on this first to be easiest and then probe each of these pins until the until I find the specific colors solder solder wires to these specific uh, pins and uh, you know we'll go from there okay so let me show you where I'm at right now um, I grabbed me a red wire and I soldered it to the bottom of a thousand microfarad cap right here okay and uh, that is my yeah, well I was hoping for 5 volts but it's 7 volts close enough it is going through a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor after all so by the time it gets there it will be probably be about 5 volts whatever and right here Kelly what would you see Nothing? Nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was this way. Yeah, there you go. There. Blue. That's blue. And the next one? Green. Green. And red. Red. Okay, so just so you know, I'm not bullshitting you. <laughs> I'm going to put the camera in front of the uh, TV so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to hit the first one. This should be blue. Yep. Right? And the next one? Green. Yep. Next one is red. Right? Yep. Okay, we got really we gotta remember that order. Blue, green, red, because they're right in a row. Alright, so let me solder those color wires in those locations. Okay, so as you can see, I soldered in, let me back out a little bit. My red, green, and blue wires, which actually go in order. The big tab is blue, the little tiny next pin is green, the next pin is um, uh, red. So I just kind of found better solder joints, better better spots. I just followed where the traces where these go. You could solder them directly to the thing, but it's so much easier sometimes if it's possible to do it this way. It's not always possible to, to, to do it that way, but you know. Okay, so let me show you what, I, what what to do next. Okay, now that I have my red, green, and blue wires soldered on, uh, hand me that those cutters. I'm gonna get this stupid. This right here goes to the uh, uh, speaker. I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna cut this off, and I'm going to solder a wire. I'm gonna move the camera up directly to right here, it looks like, yep. Yeah. Hold on, let me, get, let me get my meter. Just wanna make sure the, the connector is how I believe it is. Okay, here's my continuity test. Yeah, that looks like it's ground, and this is my uh, composite video in. So, let me solder a wire to composite. Let me chain it. Now it'll work. Okay, and let me solder a ground wire to the ground. Okay, let me tin this. Okay, and this is gonna go right here. Okay, so now my soldering iron is all tied up and mixed with these damn wires. Okay, so this is to all you guys that said well, <laughs> I'm speaking a little. I'm speaking a, a little too soon, but this is to all you guys that tell, told me I couldn't do it. We are doing it. Okay, so now it is back. The board's back inside the TV. I'm gonna turn the TV this way, and some of you guys might 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 get on me for this, but. I got one of these stupid crappy, I hate these boards, I hate them. They, these boards are responsible for destroying so many arcade machines, it makes me sick. So anyways, I don't care if I solder onto this. I know some of you guys, oh you ruined the edge connector, who cares? Anyways, 
<laughs> First thing I'm going to do is plug the TV in. Okay, TV's in. Let's wait. I'm pretty sure it's going to automatically turn on. Okay, maybe it's not. There it is. <laughs> All right. Now, oh, let me show you what I did over here. If you ever see these on eBay, you can get these really cheap. It's a crappy little power supply made in China. Probably, uh, probably, uh, probably catch on fire, but it's <laughs> it's really cheap. And you can power a 16 one or what's this? A 19 in one horizontal. But anyways, it's really, really cheap. Uh, so I'm gonna, okay, now I'm gonna plug in the 16-1, whatever it is, 19-1. Oh, okay, looks like I need to adjust the picture a little bit. Okay, four, five, it's doing its load up thing. The picture looks a little dim too. Hey Kelly, can you crank up the flyback a little bit on the back? Just, just a, a nut hair. <laughs> Don't shock yourself. Ooh, I like it, I like it. A little more, a little more. Oh, up, down, 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 down. A little more up, a little more up. There we go. So I gotta adjust the width and all that. There are um, knobs on the inside, but there it is. That's a TV, and now it's an arcade monitor. So let me do, let me do a little bit of tweaking, and I'll show you guys where to get how to tweak this. I mean, every TV is going to be different, so you know uh, you're going to have to have a little bit of know-how to do this. But this is a TV. See, all TVs are actually arcade monitors. Uh, there, uh, a t TV set is nothing but an arcade monitor with a tuner attached, and as long as you can tap into red, green, and blue, you're good to go. So, all right, let me uh, let me try to tweak this picture a little bit. Okay, I'm in the back of the TV right now, and uh, there's no real really good adjustments on here. Uh, so, you know, there's no potentiometers to adjust this. So I really and I really don't care enough to do this because this thing's probably just going to go straight to the trash when I'm done with it. Um, but I will tell you this. Oh, by the way. Uh, all these people are ringing in and they're saying, oh, geez, CRTs are endangered. CRTs are running out. You know what? If you want to save a CRT, go to Trash Night and pick up one. There's, <laughs> they are everywhere. They're everywhere. And everyone says CRTs are rare. Not even vector CRTs are rare. You can make uh, a, a 90 degree tube work in a 6100, no issues. So as of now, CRTs are not endangered. Not yet. Um, but anyways, so where was, where was I going at? Okay, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain to you how you can tune this in yourself if you if you were have if you were to have a monitor or a TV set like this. Um, first off, the picture is a little too tall, right? What you can do is you can get the the wires to your yoke, right right here. and cut the wire that does the, the height, okay? And add a, let's say a half ohm resistor, and that'll drop the height down some, okay? So that's how you fix the height. Now, the horizontal width on this picture is a little narrow, right? Well, this thing right here, you see where your yoke coils plug into? On every TV set near, near or very close to the circuit, in the circuit in some way, there will be this little tiny horizontal width coil. And what you wanna do is you wanna cut that width coil and pull some windings up, okay? And as you pull some windings up, you'll see the picture uh, either wa either widen or widen or shrink. And so, if you pull some coils up, some of some of the coils up, uh, the picture is either if if it shrinks, that means you need to add solder a little wire to it and add a few more windings, and then put it back down. Uh, if, or the, if the other way, you do, you do the other way. You just remove some windings and solder it on. Uh, does that make sense? I, ho I hope uh, if any of you guys, if any of you guys really care, does this does this help anyone? <laughs> but yeah, there it is. There's a demo for bubbles. As you can see, it's a little wide. I mean, it's a little tall, a little whatever. But that can be adjusted. But honestly, I don't care. This is just we're just gonna throw this away. Anyways, if you guys like this kind of stuff. Please subscribe. I do this. We do weird stuff like this all the time. And and you know what? I want your suggestions on what to do. Give me some ideas on things to do. Oh, by the way, this is auto syncing. These TVs are actually a little smarter than uh, arcade monitors. But uh, oh, you know what? Just for giggles, uh, 
In case you want to do exactly what I did, uh, bump the camera, I will show you the model number to this TV. Can you see that? It's a Toshiba TV, uh, 13A22, made in January 2003. But uh, yeah, so that's that. And also, these 16 ones aren't the best, are not the best for this because each individual game has a different frequency, if you notice. They're slightly different. But all right, have a good one, guys. Please subscribe, check out my other videos, and don't forget about Pinball Expo.